This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 305. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to get awesome with you here tonight. The awesome chat room is rocking, and uh, we are here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, trying something a little different. We'll talk about the 360 video experiment we're running tonight. With me in Studio C, it is John Chichilla, who turns on the podcast lights by asking Siri. Yes, she she helps me out in, in many ways, and that's just one of the the many ways she helps me out. It's turning on and off my lights. That's awesome. She's cool like that. Chilla lives in the future, and he's here to warn us about the things to come. You're doing right. my best, and I'm trying to figure out your, the, if does this work on Firefox. <laughs> we'll get to exactly what he's uh, tinkering with <laughs> in a second. But in the meantime, this is, of course, the Awesome Cast. You can't check us out, become part of the whole thing over at awesomecast.net you can subscribe to the show i'm realizing this is a little weird so let me try to fix something here in the wirecast uh we'll worry about that later uh awesomecast.net subscribe to us on stitcher spreaker itunes google play music video formats on youtube and facebook and so many other ways you can share the awesome cast love you can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash awesomecast. And uh, we got a little bit going on there. Um, thank you to our pa- two Patreon supporters at the $5 level. Our executive producers, Thistle C Business Development up in Carnegie, PA, at Thistle C on the Twitter. And Mike Fedor of Mike Fedor Show on Twitter as well. Thank you so much for supporting the show. You guys can too. Give a nickel, give a little, give a lot, or just share the show with a lot of friends over at patreon.com slash awesomecast. If you're enjoying it, help the awesome cast crew grow or join us here live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, we get started around 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, pop in as early as 6.30 and you can see uh, uh, what else we're getting into um, uh, in advance of the show, whatever, whatever we're tinkering with. There may be topics that we are not maybe bringing on the show, but we're like, have you played with this thing? Oh, hey, this doesn't work over here. How about you? You know, it, we're really kind of uh, experimenting and we it's, it's kind of our own a little um um self-help group a little bit as as this show is too right chilla we're, 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 we are the simulation of the future that elon musk talks about <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> well let's get into it with our awesome things of the week and uh chilla i want to know what your awesome thing is first before we do get into uh tonight's experiment so so hopefully uh my video is coming through pretty clear and I will actually say I have seen a bump in, well, actually a reduction in pretty much everything processor wise of what normally happens on a normal Tuesday night for us on my computer on this side. Um, so I picked up the Logitech C930 E. Um, it is a webcam. It is from the more business side of the Logitech world. Um, they claim it costs $129.99. You can get it um, at least probably under $100 on sites like Amazon. Um, the cool thing about this camera um, is not only does it do the do the 1080p that the existing cameras did, did uh, has the nice Carl Zeiss uh, lens. Uh, what to me makes the difference is it actually does the H.264 encoding on the device um so and one of the things that i actually want to use and test this with is some low-end computers um to see does it make the pc more usable because the video processing is actually all happening on the camera side of of the whole the whole stream I like that, and even more so than that. So, so we use Wirecast here, and we're using some lower end Logitech two uh, thirties. Uh, uh, I think they are two sixties, maybe um, that are they're seven twenty, and that's all we need for what we're doing. Uh, we're talking mm-hmm. heads. That that's fine, right? Uh, but maybe as we upgrade here, each one that we plug into to Wirecast, it takes more CPU because it, whether it's on the shot or not, it's processing that, right? So. Mm-hmm. 
if we can replace those with something like that that's maybe doing a lot of the processing there on the camera before it gets in although now i'm thinking about it because it's taking it and rendering it in the program and then reprocessing it out but still if that takes a little bit of cpu of like the general you know generating an image that comes into wirecast i i'd be curious about where where that bottleneck is and what it might affect that it, it should it should take all the the hit off of chrome pulling in the the video feed right and that's kind of a different situation that's like in google hangouts it helps out right right but but doesn't work in a a a higher end piece of software like uh you know like a uh, 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 wirecast yeah but and if you're not if you if you want to spend a if you want to go a little little lower end not not you're not going to bump down from 1080p but you're gonna you're gonna uh reduce your your field of view so the thing i like about this camera is i could actually get two people at a table with this it has a nice wide field of view um there is the c925e the 925 instead of the 930 still does the device side encoding but it only has a 78 degree field of view better for that that one-on-one type conversation um or if you're if you if you don't need this wide of a field of view but um that, and that falls in the hundred dollar price range, and I've seen those at, at about the same thirty percent off, so about seventy bucks, depending on where you get it. Mm-hmm. So, so these these are two newer devices from Logitech. Um, look kind of the same from the from the from their predecessors, the nine twenty and the nine hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does the device side encoding. They've they've changed the color scheme, and the other interesting thing is they must have realized that people. Um, want to be able to easily cover up their webcam because this actually comes with a little it's a plastic piece that fits over it and i can't really show it to you because i'd have to grab the camera and 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 pull it out from behind the monitor but it actually has it has a piece that actually lets you take and flip down like you would a lens cover i mean it'll actually cover up the lens i'll do it real quick here so here is you just can't see it so there it's closed and then it's open. Yeah. Um, so so pretty cool, and you can see how, how quickly it, it it auto focuses and whatnot. But it's a nice little way if you're if you're paranoid about um, your your camera being on and maybe not being notified, you can easily flip that down. Um, or for me, like I, I work at home, maybe mm-hmm. Alex, I want to make mean? sure that I know before before I'm. I'm recording. And, and for those 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 concerned about the image quality that we are getting, um, it, it, it's very dependent on our side here in the studio, the way we do things, uh, computer to computer. I actually switched you to a different computer that seemed to be receiving you a little bit better. And uh, yeah, it looks really clear, really nice, and it uh, looks like it's coming over uh, really good on the on the feed itself. So um, awesome. Check that out. Yeah, and I, I, whenever I have like a higher end kind of client that we can afford it, um, those C nine twenties or or nine tens or whatever were available, uh, or have always been really nice for us. Uh, and actually, uh, just to clarify, uh, the video that I'm on right now is actually a Logitech C three ten, and I think the one over there for the couch is a two seventy. And I've had a two seventy in this position as well. And we've had a couple uh, floating around the studio uh, over the years. So um, no, it, th- these are pretty much the go to for me uh, as far as far as uh, um, doing a pretty simple production like we do. Yeah, okay, I guess this production isn't. But for anybody else that needs a webcam, um, <laughs> it's a pretty you know it's a pretty good buy. Uh, I think in most cases. So. Awesome, and and their software that comes with it's pretty good too. I mean, you have complete control over white balance. I mean, you can auto white balance, you can auto um, auto focus, but then you you can set brightness, um, contrast. You can override the the um, focus and and white balance. You can you can do a lot with it. You can you can do a digital zoom. I don't really usually recommend doing a digital zoom, but you mm-hmm. can digital zoom. You can crop. You can do all kinds of stuff. Awesome. Well, from that to another uh, camera uh, Now, last week we talked about the uh, Rico Theta S, uh, and and I've been playing with that over the week. If you follow my Facebook, um, I'm, I've been linking a lot of things out there. And right now we are actually running an experiment. I have the Rico uh, connected through through uh, USB, 
And I don't have a very long USB, so I couldn't really place it in, uh, in too far or interesting of a place. So it's really just right here to my right, uh, your left, if you're watching us on camera. And I can actually show you a little bit of that. Uh, there's our feed that we have going on at live.sorgatronmedia.com right now. So you just get a view of me. Hey, how's it going? And you don't even get all the sound uh, because I don't have anything else really pumping in except for... Uh, the the camera itself, uh, but you can go through here and 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 again, you know, as we've talked about in the past, like it is live footage. It doesn't look like it's terribly high, crazy good quality, but it's pushing a full um, 1080. Uh, if if you have a full stream on this, and if it's embedded in a page, it doesn't look half bad to, to really, and that's kind of. You know, the Theta is not going to have a super high res video for these kinds of things, but it's going to get the job done. And, you know, as long as you're not doing a full on, I'm going to sit in an Oculus Rift kind of situation. I think it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool situation you can work with here. Uh, so, yeah, you can see entirely behind the scenes exactly what our setup is. Um, I'll mess and all on how many screens are over here. Uh, but yeah. Maybe we'll do this on a regular basis. Maybe we'll do some other ideas around this. I'm not sure. Um I, so in, in my discovery, I was working with this today, I realized, so we have this plugged into uh, Wirecast, the software that we use to switch this program. When you see all the fancy graphics, if you're watching on video, we are um, um, using it through YouTube Live. Uh, YouTube Live, when you set up uh, that initial page, if you're familiar with it, there's an advanced tab. If you go in there, there's just a checkbox that says, um, this is going to be a 360 live stream. That's it. As long as the right video format's coming out, and there's two different video formats. Um, we can just call it the circular one and the stretchy one. Go with the stretchy one. <laughs> That's my technical terms. Um, and everything will format correctly. Do you, do you mean, when you say the circular one, do you mean the two circles? Yeah, the two circles. Okay. Yeah, if you look at my test earlier on YouTube, on my personal YouTube page, um, they're, like I switch it. Like I actually brought they, they come up as two different camera feeds in uh, um, as options. So okay. I switched them as if they were cameras uh, between the two, and and of course it went all kind of wonky and crazy. So so that that was take that was you know pretty obvious. That we're not going to use it th that way. But I did realize we can probably connect multiple of these these Rico Thetas to a computer to do live streams. So now I could take one um, and and I can also do HDMI. So we have a higher end HDMI. Um, um, switcher that we use at Work Hard Pittsburgh. We just used it last night over at Academy Pittsburgh for the uh, the State of Work Hard uh, event that we that we did. Uh, I was part of helping with the stream for that. But we have like straight HDMI and SDI inputs, right? So you can take there's a little little mini uh, micro whatever HDMI at the bottom of this thing. Uh, we can take that however far we need to if we're using the right adapters and everything so we can put one at the front of the room by a, by a presenter say and then we can put one in the middle of the room and we can switch between the two cameras in wirecast in this black magic deck that we use um and have a pretty decent setup now you can't mix and match so i want to make clear with that I, I that should be pretty obvious actually if i plugged it in here this setup and i tried switching this camera um it's going to be crazy widescreen gobbledygook for the most part right um or mm -hmm. if i go and try to turn on the 360 we're going to be wrapped around and crazy um until we switch to that camera so it, it really is an all or nothing but that should be pretty obvious at this point um so uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about what we could do with that. Uh, what can we do to to kind of you know test the waters with this? Maybe with a live event somewhere. You know, maybe this is something where we have another one. We throw one on the other end of the studio, and then you can go. You know, we switch to that person talking over there, but I can turn around and see this other guy's reaction over here. You know, a debate situation would be tremendous for something like this. Um, to do it live, do and and get people a little more involved in it. Uh, and 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 yeah, it is. Uh, I, I feel like it is a little bit of G Wiz factor. Um, oh, a lot has happened actually since last week when we. We talked about this. Uh, I did get to go out and do a rally in Greensburg um, at the courthouse. There was a rally for the PA budget saying, hey, let's actually do this on time this year, guys. Uh, not going to get into that whole situation, but um, I was trying to get some stuff. So we I threw it on a tripod by the podium. So we have that going on. If you actually go to the Pittsburgh Foundation's uh, uh, Facebook page, you can see it. Um, you, you can see it. You can see the crowd. You can see them yelling. And also through that, we also figured out how to edit 
uh, through Final Cut, at least a little bit, at least taking clips of it and kind of uh, uh, putting it together. So you'll see it kind of fade from the one guy rallying the crowd to another speaker kind of rallying the crowd and, and saying something nice and, and another speaker. So we have about like four speakers, probably about two minutes of footage in there that you can check out. Again, the, the Pittsburgh Foundation um Facebook page. Also, I had a chance to uh, go visit our friend Matt Carlin's down at KDKA, uh, the CBS uh, news station here in Pittsburgh, and uh, talk to their web guy for for a little bit about what they're trying, like what what you know their ideas for what they would like to do with 360 in the future would be. Uh, we took a couple pictures of the studio of uh, you know around around the uh, offices a little bit, and uh, I know they put at least one of those up there last Thursday. So if you look at KDKA CBS Pittsburgh's, I forget what they call it on facebook uh there's an image there as well uh that you guys can check out and i'm just throwing up everything up guys i'm throwing up uh academy pittsburgh from last night uh the construction here at the top of the hill um whatever whatever we can uh kind of experiment with i did notice that i accidentally um, um took a video instead of a picture and left the thing on for about 20 minutes as i like drove away and it's in the bag <laughs> um so so that was an interesting discovery and, and reliving of my my saturday apparently um so but no, I, I think uh, I, I think there's a lot of possibility with this, and, and yeah, it's kind of that that G was factor right now. It's kind of gimmicky for right now, but I think you're gonna find a lot of we're figuring out what the real use of this is going to be. You know what I mean? I, I think it's great for getting reaction, like you were talking about. I think that's that's where I'd really like to see more of it used is to gauge the crowd and gauge you know what's going on at a specific event. Um, the one thing I, I wonder, and I, I'd almost like to see it in the studio where it was almost on top of your your one monitor that's kind of in front of you, because then you could kind of see what the person that you're talking to on the couch is doing and what you're doing. I, I think there's a lot of practice that needs to be done to make this work and look flawless, because if you're not if you're not attentive and you're kind of multitasking, you're definitely going you know, to you're your audience is going to see, oh, that person's doing this, or you know, someone got up and walked away, um, that kind of thing. So it could also be interesting from the news side of it if the person doing the video camera work isn't careful that you know the newscaster may be fixing their makeup or mm -hmm. or something along those lines where the, the it, it's going to add a whole new dynamic to uh, kind of how you put it with how things go on behind the scenes. Which I, I think is a cool dynamic to reveal. I, I yeah, right, and, and that's that's exactly why we have this now, or we're playing with this now. I mean, for us as video producers, we were trained to to get the in, get the action inside a box, right? And 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 make sure everything's framed in there. Now that box has been obliterated. What do we do with it now? Like we've been discovering. Oh, I got to take a picture. Oh, I need to make sure I'm not in the picture. Right. And it's not mm -hmm. just putting your thumb in front of the lens. It's like my body is the thumb that's in the way. You know what I mean? Uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and this is, um, yeah, kind of like when you go from like a, an editor, one editor to another, and like there's a different dynamic you kind of have to learn. Um, like there's a different dynamic to this, and, and we do have to relearn this. And that's, again, getting one of these things, playing with it, see what we can do with it, and, and getting really close to the camera with my hand and freaking, freaking out whoever's on there right now. And, um, no, it, it, it's a relearning process. It's a new – it's a, it, it's a new – it's a new thing, and uh, and we're going to see what we can do with it and push the batteries and and hopefully be on the front forefront when uh, when this is be the experts when when everybody has their hands on these things, right? So, and one one question for you, because um, you were talking about having it in your bag, and I, I have the the three hundred and sixty in my bag a lot, and I'm surprised. So, if you look at the three hundred and sixty, the power button is down on the curve of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, on the side, not near the lenses. For some weird reason, I can hear this thing all the time and see if it does it. Could you hear that? Yeah. I can hear it turning on and on and off in my bag all the time. Now, I never hear the shutter go off, um, but I do hear it accidentally getting bumped. Is the theta? Where's the power button on that? And have you had that same type of issue? I haven't had that. Well, the power button's on the side of it. 
So I think it's pretty like like it's it's got kind of flat sides to it. I can't pick. I don't want to pick it up and, and oh, yeah. upset the I situation. Um, but uh, no, I haven't had that situation. Also lost the bag already, so I found another felt bag that I've been throwing it into. So it's not entirely. <laughs> Although I should probably get the hard case because holy crap, I'm worried about those lenses. Um, and then I dropped it like twice today. I'm like, okay, we we need to do something about something. this. Um, I'm at the part in the live stream where I was waving my hand in front of the camera now. <laughs> it's all all <laughs> crazy over there. Uh, so anyways, uh, but no, that, that's that's kind of some of the fun. Now, does the Gear VR, Gear 360 VR, uh, do you know if it live streams at all? I know there was live stream options that they added to the software on the phone. Okay. I'm guessing that bumps through YouTube. Kind of remember when we took a first look at the Galaxy S... I can't remember if it was the S six or the six edge or the note. Remember the one device that when you went into the camera, you could say tap here to start an instant YouTube feed. Right. It's kind of like that in their software. They have kind of a start tap here to instantly live stream. I would be interested in trying that out maybe next week when I'm in studio. Yeah, I'd be curious um, if we can hook we that can, up alongside the theta. We can do a side-by-side -side comparison on a live stream if we can hook it up. I'm watching myself drink coffee off camera on the 360 right now. I'm not catching these because <laughs> I'm not remembering to switch to the other camera of me. I just look like a guy sitting at the desk ignoring you talking, apparently. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but no I, I i'd be really curious to see what we could do with something like that so yeah we'll be uh we'll be playing as we can see and look what's happened in a week right um mm -hmm. so and 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 this is something that both of us are pushing in our in our different uh lots in life so i'd be curious to see uh what's going on if you have any ideas what would you like to see um shot or streamed or even just pictures in 360. Is there an event? Is there is there um, some activity? Then this is not a GoPro. I'm not strapping this in my head and jumping out of a plane or anything like that. Like that would happen in the first place. Um, I'm looking for. But if you want to fund that, I will do it. There you go. We can uh, <laughs> pay. We can get start a GoFundMe to shove Chilla out out of a plane with the Theta. Actually, that would be kind of cool. We'll strap it to you. That actually could be kind of fun, actually. So um, but let us know at AwesomeCast on Twitter, at Sorgatron, at Chilla. All right. It is one of those things. And to talk just to real quick, I, I am interested. If people have ideas of what they would like us to, to do, I, I don't feel like this is one of those cameras that you just take to a, a concert, right? You, you want something where you're going to get the front and back, unless yeah. the concert, unless you were taping it from, yeah, unless you had a press on the pass. stage, yeah, unless you had a press pass, right? Right. It, it, it's it's interesting because I would like to hear where other people want. I, I I'd like to see more of buildings that people can't get in, um, or or areas that people can't get to. Mm -hmm. Um, when something potentially exciting is going on, I think it would be interested to do Fourth of July fireworks up on Mount Washington. Um, you're going to kind of get the spin around of, uh, of a portion of behind you in Mount Washington and probably a big crowd, but the ability to kind of pan and turn left to right out towards the city, I think would be kind of neat. And you just gave me an idea. I, but again, you know, <laughs> at night and, and I don't think this is the greatest quality camera to be doing something like that, but we could do like wherever we end up for 4th of July, we could, we could, I could film a little bit and, and we could see. Mm -hmm. We can see. We can see how it goes. I mean, in the long run, right? Yep. So, looking forward to that. So, or you're just watching the spectators and see how they respond and everything. You know, maybe you got a little kid sitting next, sitting next to you, and and and, and you see them light up for seeing fireworks for you know maybe the first time or something like that. You know, it's more than just mm -hmm. what's in front of you that you would be again what you would filming. It's again you're you're grabbing those little details, and I think that you know if you if you've you know uh, watching a lot of those uh, stories. Uh, edited stories in 360 that they put on within um, and, and other video kind of services on, on, on things like Google Cardboard and, and the, uh, the Gear VR. And um, yeah, it's not just that thing that's in front of you. It's, you know, look around and see everybody's reaction at the rally, see everybody's reaction here and there, right? Um, so I think that's, that's going to be the pretty important part. Um, when I took a picture last night at uh, Academy, one, it makes a, it makes a sound. Um, as, as you discovered last week, right? And it was apparently mm -hmm. very distracting while the person was doing 
representation. <laughs> and I and I stuck it like up in the air to take a picture. And they're like, "Do you need something back there?" I'm like, "No, I'm good. I'm good." Because he, he, you I'm know, just he's taking making, a 360 degree photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, well, I didn't want to explain myself in the middle of his really, really important presentation to the rest of the coworkers. But you know, but then you do look like to the one side, and then I think somebody commented on the picture is like, "Oh, that one guy is like seriously like interested in what you're doing." <laughs> <laughs> but again, I made a motion and made a noise. So yeah, I'm going to catch people's attention. So I'll be curious to see what, and nobody's really asked about it. You know what I mean? I, I've gone out in public, taken a few pictures and nobody's asked about it. You know, it's not like Google glass on your face. No, 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 it isn't. It isn't, but it's, it's kind of a funny looking device, but also do they catch the device? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. And I'm also like not taking a picture like in front of me. I'm like sticking my hand up in the air, make a funny sound, and walk away. So what's the sound sound like? Uh, it's 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 you know it's a beep. Okay. Like boop. So I've actually turned that off. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure I can too, and I probably should to be honest. Um, we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. You know what's another uh, 360 device that I am really spitting with that's pizza could be the original perfect 360 uh slice on broadway our good friends here supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right here in beachview our good friends also main street in uh carnegie pa as well as their new location at pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates i was gonna go check some out uh the other day and have lunch with my good buddy will but uh, the last, there was actually a Pirates game, and it was pretty impossible to get over there. So a little bit of a issue. So, but, but go, please check them out and schedule accordingly. Slice on Broadway. I was just seeing on their Facebook the other day, one of the local Little League teams um, got the hookup from them and, uh, and, and got, got, got them a great deal on, on a bunch of uh, pizza to feed the team. These guys are um, out there and doing really cool stuff. And the pizza's amazing, as Chilla can attest, and everybody else who wants to come back to the show just to have a, a couple slices uh check them out slice on broadway.com pgh underscore slice on the twitter um as we have been uh coming up with ideas here on this show and we were actually coming up with some ideas on on wrestling mayhem show um we're we're trying to push slice on broadway into the future not that they're doing a horrible job with anything but we have all these great technological forward-thinking ideas like pizza in a box that that is delivered on a regular basis as a subscription we call it pizza crate like loot crate so you guys can have that uh, a slice on Broadway. They like to tweet. I like to think that means that it's in the um, Skunk Works slice on Broadway R and D department right now. I can't confirm or deny that. So you can ask them PGH underscore slice on Twitter or their Facebook page. Look for Slice on Broadway uh, there or over on Instagram. All right, Chilla. Now I want to subscribe to Pizza. You do, you you do, don't you? Right? You just <laughs> yeah, be like, I do. can we just have a standing order? It just shows up my house. Yeah, you know, like like they're like I don't know. Some families have spaghetti night at their house or something, right? And uh, like Taco Tuesdays, Taco Tuesdays, you know. And uh, I don't know. I think it's a pretty good idea. You know, it's not like you're not gonna get pizza or be like, oh crap, I have a pizza coming in. I'm not. I'm. I. That's that's a problem. No, that's not a thing. Somebody says. Mm hmm. So. Anyways, Chilla, we were talking a bit about 360 video. It's kind of all the rage right now. So uh, I, I, I thought this was kind of interesting. VR Scout. I'm following a few more VR things these days. Uh, VR Scout says St. Giles Hotels are giving gear 360 cameras to guests for a campaign. So the idea is they're giving this out. Uh, they're testing a gear VR service program at local hotels in New York City. Um, the hotel brand is taking the initiative to share immersive technology with their guests, creating an advertising campaign. And so they're, they're, they're having them get out and about, um, wherever, you know, wherever they are. Um, and then, and also this is a place that they have, uh, hotels located in like Malaysia, Philippines, Australia. So they can, uh, maybe, uh, have this a little bit, uh, uh, be a little bit broader, but they're, uh, uh, basically just having them, uh, take 
360 video pictures or whatever of their time, their visits to New York and everything like that. Uh, and they're also launching a mobile app so that the content can be viewed on Google Cardboard. Hey, there you go. You're making the content. It's in there. And even when you have something as low res as a Theta or as the Gear 360 in comparison to these higher end options, it is just fine on these gear three six gear vrs geez i can't keep all the terminology straight chilla uh the 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 v the gear vrs the phone based vr is fine for these lower lower end devices i i I, if you if you put on and you can do this you can bring up the stream that we're doing tonight uh bring it up in the youtube app you should be able you should be able to click on it and uh in a browser and it should give you an option for the youtube app on 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 iphone and i imagine you should on youtube as well um but you have a ver- you could be sitting there in cardboard looking around my studio watching me do whatever look at my coffee over there i don't know in a complete google cardboard it, it it's we have both ends of the making and the delivery at this point, right, and 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 it's really cool to see, um, you know, some interesting ways that these guys are are are, are taking care of this. That's an interesting. So the the feed, the second, the three hundred and sixty feed you have going, will that record and save to YouTube as well? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it it's exactly okay. how <clears throat> this stuff goes up to YouTube. So that'll stay there, so you can play with that afterwards. That's what, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in getting out the getting out the Gear VR. And figuring out, I don't know how, how it, I don't know how interesting how it's going to be, but you know, it's there. You know, I, I, I mean, and there's making the content, and then there's okay, we made it. How can we make it better and more interesting, right? Because mm-hmm. right now we're in we're in function experimentation right now. So, well, it's function experimentation, but then it takes us to the level of someone requests something and they want us to to go out and shoot something so they can see it. Then, then anyone with a VR, it, it's easy. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, and it's something that I can't picture in my head. How easy is it to get find it in VR? Because don't forget, you don't have a keyboard, mouse, etc. to click. So I'm interested to see how what that workflow is like. Okay. Curious to see. Curious to see. All right. Um, and I'm sure we'll have more 360. Um, things as we go let's talk about robots since uh you are our herald from the future chilla and uh i i am not confirmed yet that you don't have a robot hiding somewhere when i come what, over for barbecues what, what what happens if i am a robot uh, i wouldn't be surprised i wouldn't like, be surprised. I can't confirm nor deny that that i am or i'm not a robot i wouldn't be surprised and i will not judge your lifestyle choices so and we you're still my friend if robot or not uh but anyways um uh, boston dynamics made a robot dog that can do your dishes now this has been going around a lot and even uh professor bugs kill i was hanging out with at the sorgatron media coffee and uh he was posting the one uh there's a, a banana peel uh fall prat fall by this thing uh that's been a great gift around facebook lately um but uh yeah it's a very quiet uh dog ish um kind of thing the only weird part is and let me get to the part where it's actually kind of doing the dishes here and it's walking under tables it's doing all kinds of fun stuff and then it does your dishes with its arm that is its face actually it kind of makes sense because it looks like a dog giraffe mouth in the long run except that it mm-hmm. turns sideways to get do your dishes um, well, it can put them in the. It puts them in a dishwasher. In the dishwasher, in the trash can. Oh, here comes the banana peel. Whoa, there it goes. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of like a some kind of dinosaur. A little bit, right? A little bit. Like the, like the length of the head or the length of the neck. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, there you go. Um, I mean. I, <laughs> They these guys got bought by Google. I think they're being sold. It's bringing him a drink. Look at that. Oh, it's not. It's now. It's not giving him the drink. That's interesting. The robot war is going to start over a can of Coke. Uh, but Boston Day not Dynamics, if nothing else, is keeping us just aware that the robots are coming. So. Um, Chilla, let me know what your backup awesome thing of the week is. So, and, and let me pull up that link as well. Um, oh. 
So, and I'm interested. I don't know exactly how to pronounce the company. Is it Baobax? Sure. Is it Boba? What's that? Baba. I call it Baba. Baba. This is the first time it, seeing it. I'm calling it Baba. <laughs> it's B A U B A X, and mm-hmm. both B's are capital. They're putting wireless charging ports in your clothes. Um, the cool thing, and we've seen other companies that have done this in the past. Um, they, they've they've added it's it's on Kickstarter, um, and they've added and, and changed up the way it actually works. So typically, what you would have is you would have typically a, a battery sewn into somewhere in the jacket, and then you'd have cords running everywhere, um, and, and you'd kind of plug in all your tech. Um, a lot of times, it's also USB ports, and it's up to you how you run your cords. They've taken it kind of one step further, and their battery is rem- not only removable, but it's wireless charge capable. So the battery actually gets inserted into the, the clothing, whether it's a, a sweater, a, sh- a jacket, um, they have slim fit jeans, jeans, chino pants, shorts, down jacket, bomber jacket, sweatshirt, and vest. Um, but it actually, you put it into the pocket and then it's wirelessly connected up to everything. The, the other thing that, that it comes with is it comes with um, wireless earbuds that actually fit and charge in the, the collar um, of the clothing. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then to, to, to charge it, you literally just take out the, the battery pack, which is can be wirelessly charged as well from what I've seen, um, and then charge that up and then put it back in your pocket when you go. Uh, they, they also have a wireless charging um, case for the iPhone. Um, so if your phone isn't um, Qi capable, the QI, that's the, spelled QI, um, the, the wireless charging standard. Um, you can actually also charge tar- charge your phone wirelessly as well. Um, so pretty cool. I, I would have actually given this definitely the awesome thing of the week. Um, but unfortunately, that camera came in and I, I had to definitely give it some props. Awesome. Oops. Sorry. Didn't know I okay. that. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we've had this guy Evest for a while, and 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 it's cool to see that this is kind of pushing forward. Um, and I'm also hoping. Are, are there like cheaper alternatives too? Like, it, do do I have to go the full Scott Evest to get the you know, wired? Like, it feels like it should be common by now, as as wired everybody is. I, what I think is is, I mean, you could technically take any kind of portable charger and throw it in your jacket pocket and and throw a bunch of wires into it and run it along the inside of your jacket. I think what, what these companies are doing is kind of taking it to your point to that next level. I I don't necessarily know if you're going to find something super cheap um, when it comes to things like wireless charging um, and all the additional pockets and thought process put into how many things you can stash everywhere. Um, I'm not sure I would spend $150 on a pair of jeans, um, <laughs> but it, but the the different vest and, and whatnot. I, I feel like they're a you're gonna wear you're gonna wear this more than one season, right? You're gonna the, these are gonna be you're gonna be wearing these for a few years. Even if you got like the vest type thing, you could potentially put it under your jacket, spring, winter, summer, fall, um, and wear it year round. I, I, I don't know. I look at it as if I, if I wanted something cheaper, I would just go get an external rechargeable battery and kind of lug that around. It would just be bulky and it wouldn't make sense in most of your clothes. Yeah. I mean, it's a certain level, right? When you do the fashion plus tech, I mean, notice there is an Apple watch being shown off here. Mm-hmm. It works so. because they have a special connector just for it. Right. It was, it was, it connects like right to your sleeve. Yes. That's cool. Um, so yeah, the, the the port is actually in the sleeve, and you can add and remove that piece as needed. And you loosen up your watch. Um, you loosen up your watch, and then it kind of slides in your wrist underneath the watch area. Awesome, awesome. Uh, well, check it out. Bop, 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 box, bop, bop, box. So, somebody, please let us know how to pronounce that too. While we're at it, uh, here's one I do know by now: Xiaomi, Xiaomi. 
Sorry, there's a there's a there's a there's a prompter on Daily Tech News Show. Um, they they're not just um, um, security questionable cell phones anymore. Uh, China, uh, they have a cheap, affordable electric bike that looks perfect for city commutes. Uh, you know, I my I've been looking at you know how much I'm just bouncing around Beachview these days, and I'm like, oh, I I just need to roll up there and and drop off my library books or something right like this feels like the perfect thing there's something like this not not the same model obviously that they're they were um they were reviewing on the verge like a while ago or is this the same one no this has to be a new one but um they they were kind of going through there's another one i think it's the tesla bicycles but they were kind of talking about like like what you know what is it perfect for you know for their commute and, and then for them it's a new york city commute so it can be a little more in depth right mm-hmm. um i think this would be perfect for something like that now i don't know how ridiculous my six foot four frame is going to look on this little thing uh but other than that I, it, it, it's you, you can i'm kind of i'm kind of up with the idea so you know tackle all those hills how does it do on hills too is the other question i have uh so go check it out xiaomi's uh affordable electric bike and there's a lot of these around too you can be putting around the neighborhood I don't hurt myself on one of those uh, hoverboards, right? So, well, at, for, at forty-five kilometers is a pretty decent distance. So it sounds like it's forty-five kilometers, and it's going like ten miles an hour. Hmm. Well, it's a uh, it's a pretty good idea. It's something that I can uh, lug myself up the hill to go get my morning coffee from brew. So, and that's the one thing I wish from Pittsburgh. I wish there was an easier way to bike into Pittsburgh. The tunnels and the, the, I mean, you're, you can't bike through the tunnel and it, it would be interesting to see if you went up over the hill, mm. how easy that would be. Uh, we have a Traegar uh, rolling into the chat room here early uh, for the wrestling stuff. And he's telling us he's, the, uh, he's only on his sixth mobile phone he's had. Uh, he's behind the times. The uh, third smartphone, a dude at the store said that he ha- he's on his uh, 217th phone. How do you get onto your 217th phone? Well, if you work at the store, I think that's part of the thing. Or you're a they reviewer. They just give you a new one every month to carry around? Yeah, yeah. Try, well, yeah, I mean, you got to think. You, well, you got to know what these phones are so you can sell them and, and everything like that. That makes sense. But generally, geez, how many phones have I been through? Six, seven, eight. I probably have about eight or nine phones since I Is went that's- all phones or just smartphones? I've had two flips and uh, and yeah, about six iPhones or it'll be five iPhones. Ones I've actually used. Original, 3G, 4, then you just go through the numbers, whatever the Gs were, right? Uh, so, uh-huh. so yeah, that's, I mean, I'm not counting like, hey, I might have a Samsung S6 lying around here now, you know, uh, or anything yeah, like that. Like you're talking like daily drivers. Yeah, I'm talking I'd daily drivers. Think, like, I'd have to think back because I, I had a candy bar phone. Once again, you are not normal people, Chilla. In <laughs> Chilla world, like like six months is a long time, probably for a phone. It's it. I break I break at the the year point. It's not six, six months, isn't? But I I do break at the year point. You also have a lot of other opportunities to mm-hmm. uh, experiment with other phones too. So. There's that. There's, there's that whole thing. Like like the people that I always hear talking about phones and, and taking care of all these phones and making sure everything's synced up. Yeah, they're reviewers that go through three of them a month, right? Yeah, they're, again, not made for you and not a problem that I should worry about. You know, I'm still as much of a techie as I am. This phone is going to last, knock on wood, it will because I've put freaking Iron Man armor around it. Uh, it's going to last me until two phones from now. Uh, so I'm good to go. Hell, I'm still using my last phone for like video and and everything. So, I, I I use I use old phones for testing beta versions in early beta before I put them on my daily driver. I use I mean I I use the I use there's a there's a phone I use to control the audio on the on the back patio. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like it used to, what I used to have seven computers sitting around the house. I now have one computer and six phones. 
<laughs> oh, that is that is a good uh, uh, point right there because I'm I'm noticing that too. But then again, I'm also replacing a lot of my computers with Raspberry Pis. But but the footprint, I that I I'm mm-hmm. I'm realizing this as I, as I, as I'm prepping for some of these moves we're doing. I'm realizing how few computers will be left in my house when I'm done with this. Right? How how few well, how few big boxy holy crap menagerie of computers are going to be around? And we're just going to have uh, it, maybe I'm going to start the Chilla project. Um, I will, will, will call it the Sorg project and that's how I'm going to integrate my world and start talking to Siri. You know, I mean, I mean, I do talk to Siri now, but she just doesn't do anything. I'm very sad and alone in the dark, uh, versus how you do things. Uh, but, 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 you know, actually getting that to work here and, and, and feeling like I'm in a home of the future. So. We well, don't leave the outside looking like it's, it's still a, a home of 1937, uh, just so nobody comes looking. But anyways, all right, you got another one here. Tell me what the Xbox, uh, man, the Xbox is really batting you down as far as the court cutters anymore. Well, so, so one of the things that was promised this year, and, it, and it's something I've actually, it's not easy to take my entertainment system apart and to swap swap stuff. It's easy to put some in, put something in, um, like if I got a new <laughs> Blu-ray player, I could easy take to... the old Blu-ray player out. Right. I could reuse the HDMI cord. Maybe I have to re restring a, or, or rerun a, a power cable, but it's, it's not, it's nothing crazy. If I wanted to do something like remove Xbox one from HDMI one on the back of the TV, um, and no longer have it be my pass through for my cable box, et cetera, et cetera. That's a, that's a large lift and shift in the entertainment center where I'm moving multiple cables. I'm, I'm rerunning configurations. It's, it's not something that I would just say, eh, I'm going to try this for the weekend. I want to, gonna- and I think this is where we need to do exactly what we were talking about before the show and say, this is a thing that Chilla has a problem with. <laughs> this is not a pro- thing that any of you out there should not use some of this technology because you have stacks on stacks of technology here that is working in harmony. Right. Pro- probably because you probably have a harmony remote. But but <laughs> I, I mean, do I do. This is see see this is not a typical situation. This is the advancement from Chilla of the future coming back to let you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 something that that I'm going to give a whirl. Um so I've I've seen a few things with with Xbox One o- over the last year. Um stability in its pass through. Um so I know a lot of people didn't do the the video pass through day one, um, or they added it on late, and they maybe they haven't had as many issues. Um, I have five dot one Dolby Digital Surround um, that I have configured on my cable box. It passes through the Xbox, and then it goes into the TV. Um, TiVo has had major issues with the way Xbox One handles that, so I lose audio from time to time. Um, one of the things that I was looking forward to was maybe I wouldn't necessarily need TiVo as much because Xbox One was going to get DVR um, cap- capability. Um, that's something that right before E3, Microsoft came back and said, yeah, we're not going to do um, the, the DVR service anymore or, or for right now. Um, Verizon removed um, some of their applications uh, for, for live video. So, so that's one of those things where I'm starting to wonder. And, and, and at the same time, I have the TiVo box that recently added um, that, well, they've had Netflix and, and Hulu and Amazon Prime. Um, they've recently added HBO to go um, to their application list. So it's one of those things where you know, the, the, more and more of the things the Xbox I was using for, for, for TV type stuff um, – I'm not using as much anymore and I'm able to stay just in the TiVo world. What really worries me and what I'm probably going to hang on to do this until is their, their upcoming update where they add Cortana. Um, I have some fears that when Cortana tries to take over voice control, my things where I tell the, the Xbox to, to mute or to um, change channel or whatever, um, I'm hearing that a lot of that that the the focus has definitely shifted away from controlling the TV and the entertainment experience, and it's definitely shifted to 
kind of a search and and game experience, which I'm not sure if that excites me. Um, I'm interested that if that if TiVo took their stream app that they have for phone, tablet, etc., added it to added it to the um, Apple TV. To me, that would be the perfect candidate to become HDMI one. Otherwise, I'll I'll probably move to the TiVo. But I, I really want to see what they do with Cortana. Um, but at the same time, it, it's definitely slipping. Xbox One is definitely slipping from from what it used to be as the entertainment center hub of the living room, and they're and they're definitely switching that out to to become more game focused, and they're more interested in getting groups of gamers together. Um, than they are giving me a seamless entertainment experience experience in my living room. Oh, how things have changed from the first, <laughs> hey, you know, for, yeah. And again, like saying, Hey, you, you're not going to be left behind on the video game front when it comes to these, right? He mm-hmm. didn't say anything about Shilla and his entertainment center. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's interesting. That's interesting, but you can still what? use the old one you have. Oh yeah. I'm still going to use it. I'm going to still use it. Um, I just don't think it'll be HDMI one anymore. So damn it, damn it Microsoft, it, damn it, Microsoft. Why, why aren't you giving me reasons to buy your new thing? <laughs> a little well, bit. And even in the new one, I mean, until they figure out how they're going to do Cortana, there's no, they didn't even put the connect port on the back of it. So even right. if you wanted to buy a connect, then you, you have to use a USB adapter because the, the, the connect port isn't back there. So what upsets me is that the device was originally, up played and sold as an entertainment and gaming device. And now it's a gaming device that can do a little bit of entertainment, which seems like we're back to where we started with Xbox, right? Mm-hmm. With it, with it, but it, and that goes back to the 360. So yeah, I, I don't know, man, hooking Kinda. in the original Xbox and uh, Xbox and realizing how little it actually does is astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> like you get that when you go back to like PlayStation 2 I'm like this thing plugged in it just ran off the disc yeah I know and that, that's good but you, you look at the Xbox it's like man that an Ethernet port and it still couldn't do what you know it, it, mm-hmm. also it has an Ethernet port I can't just run it in my living room I have to figure something else out for that right so the, the, the one at least has wireless the, the 360 you had to get if you wanted wireless you had to have a an add on adapter to, right. to handle wireless in right, most right. cases. Yeah, and I have that too because I have the Xbox Elite, uh, the, ah. the, the first, the first black one with the uh, with the HDMI up conversion. That's I still watch DVDs on. I still don't have a Blu-ray player. I watch mm-hmm. DVDs on there, and they look great on my TV. Uh, I don't notice too much any issue with it. Um, you know, I'm sure if I watch it next to an HD Blu-ray, I'm going to notice. But like watching mm-hmm. like watching like like Justice League Teen Titans that I got from the library, I'm good. I'm fine. They were okay over here, you know. That's cool. And I think were you messing around with Plex? Uh, yeah, I still have Plex running on a Mac Mini upstairs. I'm probably going to have to move that to its own independent system. So so the so there is a Plex app for Xbox One as well. I don't know if it's out for 360, but they did launch one for that as well. So you can have another. There's one for Apple TV. Viewing box around the house. Uh, not too big of a concern. We only really have one place, one main watching area. Um, other than that, it's it's you know if I'm down here, I'll throw something up on on an iPad or one of the computers, right? If I'm mm-hmm. up in the office, I have a, a a tube a tube that's still hooked up to that original Roku. Uh, so I can watch uh, Netflix and uh, Twit on that, and and anything else I'll just throw on the iPad. That's fine. So good to go. Uh, Chilla, it's been fun. It has been fun. I'm sorry. It's been it's been 360 degrees of fun. 360 degrees of fun from the future with Chilla joining us. John Chilla at ChillaTech.net is his blog. Anything new coming up over there? Um, I'm probably going to add your experience and some browser information. And then I still got to get the Facebook infos up for how to go from 360. And I've actually been using the Theta app a lot on my iPhone. So then I can pull forward my 360 photos from <laughs> the Gear 360 side. So, so I'm going just... to throw this, throw a slew of tips, tricks, and, and, and a few nuggets out there for 
for people that are new to either picking up the Theta, the 360, or or any of those types of devices and how to get uh, the, the photos and the video cross-platform because it seems to be sometimes kind of kind of interesting, especially when you look at the Samsung world. Yeah, yeah, and that's my big, I mean, it's, it's a nice camera, but again, you kind of have to live in that world in order to to, to do that. Uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm busy enough being in the Apple world myself, so. Mm-hmm. And even that's not entirely everywhere, so. Uh, and of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Follow Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com. Sign up to the newsletter. We're uh, talking about things that we're doing all, every week. I got a little write up about, uh, I'll probably end up talking about 360 video because I don't think I've done that since we picked this up. So uh, uh, go check that out. Sign up for the newsletter. You get a free download with the intro to podcasting this week. Uh, evening with Podcamp, PodcampPittsburgh.com for information or, or the event over on Facebook or the uh meetup group um and i might actually be missing something on the front page there for that uh but that is coming up this uh uh, thursday at work hard pittsburgh 7 p.m eastern time we will be live streaming it we're gonna have a menagerie of 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 uh, one guy's on the digital team for the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign, uh, a, people from from the uh, Tribune, so pe- the journalists, uh, all kinds of people, all kinds of walks of life. Friend of the show, Kim Lyons, is going to be moderating the panel. Is going to be part of PodCamp Pittsburgh. Go check it out, uh, podcamppittsburgh.com or facebook.com slash podcamppittsburgh and for information on that event and the awesome lineup we have coming up for that. So looking forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, and from then, oh, hey, uh, I think this Thursday we're going to release, we did a special edition talking about Comic-Cons last week. Uh, we had some of our comments about Wizard World and Diggy out there. John DeGore had some had some uh, uh, issue with some of the things we said. So I was like, hey, let's talk about cons. So we had him on. We had Will Rutherford of uh, PanelRiot.com. And we actually had some commentary from Dan Greenwald of Comic Book Pit joining, uh, or sent in to us as well. So we had a good discussion about that. Again, that'll probably be up this Thursday at AwesomeCast.net. Or you'll find it right here on your feed, wherever that may be on audio or video. So go check that out too. And uh, with that, hey, th- uh, go check out awesomecast.net, like I said, and check out our Patreon if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash awesomecast, and join the crew. Thank you so much. Thank you, at, Ch- Ch- at Chilla on Twitter. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.